Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa visited the Royal Bahrain Naval Force. Upon arrival, His Majesty the King was received by the BDF Commander in Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa. His Majesty was accompanied by the Commander of the Royal Guard Special Force, Lieutenant Colonel His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and Captain His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Also present were the Minister of Defense Affairs, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Naimi, the Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar Naimi, and the RBNF Commander and a number of officers. At the beginning of the visit, the Guard of Honor played the Royal Anthem in honor of His Majesty.
Then His Majesty the King inaugurated a number of new and advanced warships marking their entry into service at the RBNF. The warships are Al Ghrairiya, Sakhir Al Farooq, Jinan, and Damsa. His Majesty hailed the new warships' high combat capabilities, which reflects the continuous development of various PDF weaponry. His Majesty the King also inspected the Ghrariya warship, met with its captain and a number of crew members and listened to a briefing on the warship's high-end technology and distinctive efficiency that keeps pace with the development of modern warships. The new warship's crew took a fo photograph with His Majesty the King. On the occasion, His Majesty the King welcomed the guests, the U.S. Ambassador to Bahrain, the U.K. Ambassador to Bahrain, the Commander of the U.S. Naval Forces Central Command, the U.K. Maritime Component Commander, and all participants from GCC and Arab countries. His Majesty the King expressed thanks to the Commander of the U.S. Naval Forces and the U.K. Maritime Component Commander for their keenness to enhance cooperation and joint action. His Majesty affirmed the importance of the strategic partnership between Bahrain and the U.S. and the U.K. in all fields, especially military, defense, and security for the benefit of the countries and their people, as well as working together and in solidarity with brotherly and friendly countries to protect the security of the region and international navigation and to maintain the free flow of maritime trade in the region and the world. His Majesty praised the efforts of the members of the RBNF in performing their noble mission in solidarity with the BDF and defending the kingdom and its civilizational gains in addition to their important participation in securing freedom of navigation, global trade, safety of international energy corridors, and combating piracy in the region as the BDF is a force of security and peace. His Majesty wished them all success. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the Federal Deputy of the Brazilian Chamber, Eduardo Jair Bolsonaro. The meeting reviewed Bahraini Brazilian relations and means of developing them and discussed issues of common interest. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed pride in the existing bilateral relations that are based on respect and mutual appreciation.
The Deputy Prime Minister His Highness Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa inaugurated Medina Khalifa Health Center. The Southern Governor His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Khalifa was present. The Deputy Prime Minister affirmed Bahrain's advanced level in health and medical care under the development process led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the government's efforts headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He recalled the efforts of the late His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa in developing health services in the kingdom. For his part, the Southern Governor affirmed that the Governor adopts an approach that is based on communication and national partnership in line with its executive plans that aim to fulfill the needs of the residents and achieve comprehensive development. The President of the Supreme Council for Health asserted that opening the Medina Khalifa Health Center embodies the aspirations of His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in developing the health services system and fulfill the needs of citizens. The Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Development Projects and Infrastructure Ministerial Committee, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, inaugurated the initiative of the Agriculture and Marine Resources Agency at the Minister of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning to launch 100,000 fish farmed locally by national experts that aims to increase the fish stock. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah affirmed that launching 15 tons of locally farmed fish is an implementation of the Royal Directives to develop a strategic project for national food production. The Deputy Premier asserted the importance of initiatives aimed at achieving sustainable food security and continuing to exhort the private sector to direct its investments toward that goal. He urged the Ministry of Forks to stimu stimulating innovative systems to improve the quality of quantity of fish production by utilizing the best international practices. He also directed the ministry to continue farming fish species that meet the needs and taste of local consumers and their food preferences to ensure their availability throughout the year. Sheikh Ali bin Abdullah met with a number of Bahraini investors who rented investment plots in Ras al Hayyan for the purpose of fish farming projects, thanking them for being an example of effective partnership between the public and private sectors. The Deputy Premier also listened to a briefing from the Minister of Forks in which he affirmed that the national Mary Culture Center is prepared to meet the requirements of the next stage. The President of the Survey and Land Legislation Bureau and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Bahrain Real Estate Regulatory Authority, Sheikh Salman bin Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, visited Bahrain Financial Harbor as part of his field visits to view the progress of real estate projects. Sheikh Salman hailed the development and progress of the project and the multiple services that the project includes. He commended the efforts of the GFH Financial Group and its contribution to the field of real estate and investment development and infrastructure projects and the innovative quality projects it provides. 
Sheikh Salman praised the pace of development in Bahrain, which is a result of its legislative and regulatory structure that is capable of attracting investors and local and international capital owners. He affirmed that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King, is moving steadily towards achieving further development in various sectors, including the real estate sector, in order to achieve the visions and aspirations of His Majesty, aimed at increasing development to provide the best life opportunities for the people of Bahrain. Sheikh Salman added that SLRB and RERA are working on formulating and implementing the government's plans and programs. The Bahrain and Turkish Joint Committee held its seventh meeting under the chairmanship of the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Turkish Minister of Treasury and Finance, Nouruddin Nabati. At the beginning of the meeting, Sheikh Salman welcomed the Turkish Minister and the accompanying delegation, stressing the importance of continuing the constructive efforts made during the previous meetings of the committee in order to develop cooperation between the two countries in various fields, especially finance, economy, commerce, investment, and development. During the meeting, a memorandum of understanding was signed between the two countries on cooperation in various fields and activities of standardization and means to enhance and develop bilateral cooperation between the two friendly countries in a number of vital issues and fields in addition to discussing investment opportunities and exchanging experiences between the two sides. Sheikh Salman announced that Bahrain has granted Turkey the status of authorized partner for the International Center for Sea and Air Freight Services in the Kingdom, expressing Bahrain's aspiration to enhance aspects of cooperation and joint coordination. Sheikh Salman referred to the economic recovery plan announced by the Kingdom and the important opportunities it includes, noting that the plan is based on five main priorities. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, met the Turkish Minister of Treasury and Finance, Nouruddin Nabati, and his accompanying delegation, who are on an official visit to the Kingdom to participate in the seventh meeting of the Bahraini Turkish Joint Committee. The Finance Minister stressed the importance of creating more fields of economic cooperation and strengthening relations between Bahrain and Turkey in order to achieve the interests of the two friendly countries. Sheikh Salman highlighted the distinguished relations between the two countries, noting that they are developing steadily at all levels. The two sides discussed means to further bolster joint co cooperation in the economic and investment fields to achieve shared goals and aspirations. They also discussed the latest developments in the global economy. 
Within the framework of bilateral relations between Bahrain and France, the Minister of Health, Faiq al-Saleh, received a batch of the Valneva coronavirus vaccination. It was handed over by the French ambassador to Bahrain, Jerome Couchard. The Minister of Health hailed the cooperation between the two countries in, health, in the health field, commending the mutual interest and in relations to strengthening them at all levels. During the meeting, quantities of the Valneva coronavirus vaccine was rece were received, which the National Health Regulatory Authority approved for emergency use and was which is produced by the French company Valneva in France, thus making Bahrain the first country in the world and to authorize and receive the vaccination. We are very pleased to be here today at the Ministry of Health of Bahrain to announce the <coughs> first dose delivery of our inactivated vaccine VLA-2001. Uh, we have uh, signed an agreement with uh, the Kingdom of Bahrain for the delivery of 1 million doses in 22 and 23. Uh, it is the first inactivated vaccines double adjuvant approved in the region and we aim to deliver Bahrain but to extend this uh, agreement and this approval to all the country in GCC. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed Zayani, visited the Startup Nation Central Foundation as part of the official visit of the economic delegation to Israel to get informed about the foundation's innovative solutions in supporting commercial activities. The minister listened to a briefing on the work mechanisms to promote the innovation and work environment and attract investments. Zayani praised the advanced level of the foundation's work mechanisms, stressing the importance of benefiting from these advanced experiences in the field of innovative solutions. The Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning, in cooperation with the Ministry of Housing and the Waste Management Center, Estidama, launched the project in the East Head Housing Area to sort plastic, paper and metal waste. This comes as part of the awareness campaign program implemented by the Municipalities Affairs to promote the culture and behavior of sorting household waste across Bahrain. The Undersecretary for Municipalities Affairs, Engineer Sheikh Mohammed bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, confirmed that the project came as a continuation of the implementation of the National Strategy for waste management, which receives great attention and follow-up from the Minister of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning, with the aim of bringing about change. The Bahraini ambassador to the U.S., Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid Al Khalifa, visited the New York City Police Academy within the Memorandum of Understanding signed between the Ministry of Interior and the New York City Police. The ambassador affirmed that the security and stability witnessed in, by Bahrain is thanks to the royal vision of His Majesty the King that aims to achieve community partnership. He held the efforts of the government, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and its keenness to enhance security as the best way to achieve sustainable development. The ambassador gave a lecture in which he received reviewed the experience of the community service police at the Bahrain Ministry of Interior. He said the Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, is keen on providing programs aimed at preventing crime and on building the character of children and youth on sound educational foundations. The Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs organized the Bahraini Women's Leadership Program in cooperation with the U.S. Embassy in Bahrain, which aims to shed light on the leading Bahraini women in many fields and to present Bahraini models, in addition to sharing the Kingdom of Bahrain's and the United States' experience in empowering women. The activities of the four-day program close today and the participation of 46 emerging women leaders. During the program, several workshops were held in which speakers from some of the most prestigious colleges and organizations in Bahrain and the United States spoke. Speakers representing private, government and non-profit organizations led workshops and discussed building skills including leadership and negotiation skills, social media, public speaking and women in government. We had 53 young leaders from around Bahrain here for the last four days. We put them through a very intensive leadership boot camp. There were 15 different courses taught over in just four days, and they responded in flying colors. They engaged, they asked questions, uh, they showed that they're true leaders in the making. Uh, we're in Power Peace, and we do these programs all over the world. And with this program in Bahrain, because we've done them in Egypt, in Jordan, in Belgium, in India, in Pakistan, with this program here in Bahrain, we will have graduated over 3,800 young leaders from 90 different countries. And these teachers are amongst the very best. Uh, I, it's impossible to overstate the importance of contributing and investing in the next generation of leaders. Uh, everything that I've heard about this particular group 
and the two previous groups that have participated in this program is that they are highly engaged and they are ready to give back to this great nation of Bahrain. And truly, I think the future of this country is in very good hands through everything that I see happening uh, among the youth. The pandemic's been really hard on everyone, especially when it comes to communication skills and being able to talk to these young women this week about empowering themselves to be better communicators and to feel like their voices matter and be able to articulate opinions and arguments and just be more confident overall with their speaking ability, I think is going to make a big difference moving forward past the pandemic. The Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs announced that the Moon Sighting Panel will hold a session tomorrow, April 1st, to receive news and testimonies of sightings of the crescent of the holy month of Ramadan from Bahrain and the Islamic world, signaling the advent of the holy month. The Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs urged the public to report their testimonies to the Moon Sighting Panel. The Arab Observatory for Human Rights, headed by Arab Parliament Speaker Adel Assoumi, signed a joint cooperation agreement with the National Institution for Human Rights, headed by the Chairman of the Board of Directors Ali Darazi in Cairo. The Arab Observatory for Human Rights praised the efforts of His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, in supporting the field of human rights in the Kingdom of Bahrain, which made it occupy a prominent Arab, regional and international position. The Arab Observatory for Human Rights pointed out the importance of the agreement which came as a reflection of the serious steps taken by the observatory in establishing qualitative and effective Arab steps and initiatives with the national structures concerned with human rights in Arab countries. For his part, Darazi stressed the importance of the agreement, which contributes to directly to the protection of human rights in the Arab region.